the Google Pixel stuff finally arrived. Google Pixel 5 and 4A 5G. And uh, it's a little bit different this year because Google, they, uh, it, maybe it's a bit of a departure. We have a, a budget minded device with the Snapdragon 700 series. And this one, what is it? The 765G and uh, also 5G, sub six 5G on the Pixel 5 model. But with the 4A, they put 5G right in the name. It's the Pixel 4A 5G. We have a couple different colors here. What do they call it? Just black? Just black. They stick into the just black branding. And then we have Sword of Sage, which is the exciting model that everybody wants to have a take on because, well, it's an unusual green. It's the year of unusual greens because uh, Apple put out a green as well. And it was, it was a polarizing green. I think this one actually got some decent feedback. Of course, it doesn't matter to me because I won't be slapping on uh, a Pixel 5 official case, but what I will be slapping on is this right here. The later case, crazy thin Kevlar. As you know, it's gonna make sure that I can enjoy the Pixel 5 the way it was intended, almost as slim as having no case at all. You can order these right now, so I'm gonna go for the black Pixel 5, so then I have the seamless look once the later case goes on. You could check this out in the description. Okay, so let's start with that model. And we have two little pull tabs over here. Now it is important to note, this is not a millimeter wave model, so no Verizon love for the super fast 5G, at least not here. Oh, that's an interesting texture. A little bit grippy, almost one plus sandstone -y, but not quite to the same degree where you feel as though it is sandpaper for your fingers. This, on the other hand, is a satisfying kind of grippiness. Did you hear that? It's the best way for you to imagine the texture. Again, it doesn't matter for me, I slapped the later case on, but it's uh, it's worthwhile to mention because it is a bit, of, a bit of a departure. You don't see this all that frequently. Uh, let me remove the plastic. It looks like an easy to remove situation. Ah, yes. So this is a compact phone for this year. Everybody's interested in a smaller phone. We got, I mean, they scaled up so big, I guess uh, it's not just Google, uh, Apple, they put out the 12 mini yesterday and uh, they claim that's the smallest 5G phone in the world. This is close comparatively. What I'm interested in is on the back here. I uh, have been a fan. I mean, I've told you before. I've been a fan of the computational stuff that Google does in the camera department. I feel like with previous pixels, I couldn't take a bad photo. I'll just point at something, boom. Why does that look so wonderful? The other interesting characteristic, the fingerprint scanner, it's on the back. I never minded this on previous phones. And for me, it's actually a little bit faster than the in-display. Little touch here on the side, you have the metallic power switch, which is above the volume rocker, bottom of the device, Type-C connector. I believe it's an 18 watt charger in the box. And I can already tell we have a single hole punch up in the top corner. You remember previous pixels, they've been all over the map with various notches and things. This is a nice little simple implementation, not too distracting. You get the screen to body ratio. All right, so let me get that started booting up. Google logo jumps out. Also in the box, we have our paperwork, our SIM tool. We have the power brick that I mentioned and 18 watt USB type C. All right, cool. Plastic removal. Ooh. We have our USB type C to C cable and they've even included a C to A adapter for all your migration needs. So that's a nice little touch as well. Now that one is still booting up. So I'm gonna jump over to the Sage model so we can catch a glimpse at this color right here. Same procedure. Ooh, you know what? As far as greens go, I'll tell you what. It's not a terrible green. It's quite pleasing, inspired by nature possibly. It's a bluish green. All right, let's get to it. Boom. Kind of creates a nice con contrast here on the side of the device where it meets the glass. But again, I'm gonna be boring and just go for the black model, of course. Uh, also the button on this one, it's metallic, but it has a sage kind of tone to it. And now let's go ahead and check out just how much larger the 4A 5G is. So it's a six inch display on the regular Pixel 5. 
and 6.2 inches on the Pixel 4a 5G. So it's not a tremendous difference in scale. Of course, there is a difference in price. This one, I guess that's plastic. Sure feels like it. Not as pleasing as the texture over here on the standard Pixel 5. Much bigger body over there. You know what's weird about this device though? I don't believe it got a huge battery. The battery spec on the regular Pixel 5 is 4,080 milliamp hours, 3885. So that's kind of a strange departure here from, from the norm. You would assume you have a bigger phone, you get a bigger battery. I guess it's not always the case, but you do uh, save some cash. I like the dark mode option during the setup so I can go straight into dark mode. See, it allows you to save battery with a dark theme or you can switch to the light theme right out of the gate. I'll leave it dark for now. So here we have our smooth display setting. Automatically raise the refresh from 60 to 90 Hertz for content increases battery usage. This is something Google introduced a little while ago. Uh, for me, it makes a big difference. The biggest jump or the most noticeable one is, is getting to 90 Hertz. And then beyond that is a bonus, but the 60 to 90, you can notice it. So that's the other difference. Uh, that 90 Hertz upgrade, it's only gonna happen on a small model. This is obviously once again, a cost thing. It's, it's a real interesting position that the Pixel is in at the price point, what they're asking for it, because you're not getting a top tier chip and you can, I mean, instead of the Pixel 5, you could find something with a Snapdragon 865 in it for a very, you know, very close in price. However, with the Pixel, what you're getting is, you're getting Android the way that Google intended. You're getting the freshest updates. You're getting a completely vanilla experience. You're getting their computational photography stuff in their camera app, which yes, you can find a way to get it on other devices, but it's a bit of a headache. All right, so I'm gonna focus my attention on the standard Pixel 5. All right, so funny enough, you have to dive into the menu here to find battery share and drag it up into your quick toggle settings, at which point you can utilize it. So this is how it works. Charge other devices with your Pixel, flip the phone over to give it a try. Okay, no problem. Here we have the Pixel Buds. Ooh, did you hear that notification? And the orange light lights up. So now we're charging the buds from the phone. That's a cool feature for Google. It has, it has of course been elsewhere, but it's convenient to have it on more devices. So I'm uh, happy about that. Turn it off when it's not in use. Obviously you don't want any battery drain going that way. The standout thing to me here is just how comfy the single handed usage is for this device. I'm gonna actually slap the case on it right now because that's how I'll use it. And I mean, it's just so, take a look at that. It's so slender, the whole package and small. This is coming from a guy who's been using, this is what I've been using. I've been using those Z Fold 2. It's a bit of a tank, uh, which is fine because you open it up and it's a tablet in your pocket, but the weight and, I mean, you know you have it on you. This is the complete opposite, the standard Pixel 5. And it might be a fun time for myself to, uh, it, it take a different, have a different experience and go down the small phone road, which seems to be a thing that uh, manufacturers are uh, catering to right now. So may maybe it's time for me to have that experience too, at least for a time period. Maybe I should throw the SIM in here. That would make this the first phone in a very long time that I throw the SIM in that does not have a flagship level processor in it. It's a sign of the times right there. Okay, so we uh, cut there for a moment, had about a billion updates to run on the device. Also, you know what? I just thought, I'm gonna switch to this phone. I uh, I don't know what it is, all right? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be honest with you. The Pixel devices each year, it kind they kind of get me going a little bit. Uh, it's something about the vanilla software experience and the camera app, and I just, I feel like I need to dive a little deeper. So you can see, I got this one, it's rigged up. I, uh, I changed the wallpaper, man! Which it means we're beginning our process of becoming intimate together. I also brought it home with me to run some of the updates and play around with it a little bit more. Man, is this a comfy, that's a comfy phone. It's just, I've, uh, well, I've been on really heavy phones recently. I mean, I'm talking brick-like phones. And so this has just been so 
uh, satisfying to do the one-handed, to have the light weight, to do the unlock real speedy. Now, I wish it had the face unlock as well, but uh, I can manage because the rear unlock fingerprint is so fast. So I'm living my life and I'm okay with it. Now, one of the updates that took place, we have a new camera UI. So I had to show that off to you. It's a little bit different now. Some of the editing features are a little bit different the way they come up as well. As you can see, we have uh, these really big buttons for enhance black and white portrait and color pop. And then as you move down to the bottom here into these various sub menus for crop and adjust, it's, uh, it's just a completely different interface, uh, giving you a little bit more control. It's the most current one that they're working on. But let me tell you, there's something, there's just something about the look the way the processing takes place here. Now, I realize other manufacturers have caught up. I have tested so many fantastic uh, smartphone cameras in here. But what's cool this time around is uh, assuming the camera performance on this guy, 4A5G, is similar. What's cool is to get this level of camera performance in devices at this price point. So I realize the Pixel 5 there's a lot of discussion around price for what it is, considering it doesn't have the flagship chip in it. And we're talking about 700 bucks. Uh, but this one, on the other hand, if you're really interested in value, well, now you're talk I'm talking about the 4A 5G or even the regular Pixel 4A for that matter. It's just cool to see their level of computational photography in devices that are that cheap. And, uh, and so, of course, this is no exception. You pair it with the large battery, and some features like wireless charging, reverse wireless charging, fast unlock, extra camera module. I don't know, we just have a package here that for some reason in my hands is compelling at the moment. So let's go ahead and just snap a few more photos inside of the new UI. I mean, I didn't bring over the Robin Hood all-purpose flower for no reason. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick 1X over here. Boom, there's a 1X and a 0.6 and a 2x as well and then also you know what might be cool is to try to get a close focus all right so that's the two that's your 2x camera and i don't know about you kirk but i mean i'm seeing the texture of the bag over here all right the uh, video ui also new uh, a lot of the fancy stuff happens under this little shake button right over here you have standard video stabilization for light movement that's the default setting you have locked for far away still shots, 2x zoom, active for heavy movement. So that's the most extreme stabilization. And then cinematic pan, which is the thing that they showed off at the event, which uh, gives you these smooth panning shots, half speed muted, interesting. So I suppose we should do maybe the standard version first. So this is standard stabilization and i am going to walk around and mo's gonna say hi there you go and i'm still walking and the camera is moving relatively rapidly and you can test out just how smooth that is and i'm now i will go ahead and switch to active mode i don't know what's going to happen here is it going to crop in more look we even have a little demo Oh, interesting. So unstabilized versus standard. Well, obviously that's quite the difference. A demonstration of locked for zoom, my goodness. Ah, I don't think we're gonna simulate the uh, active scenario at the moment. Cinematic pan? Yeah, I can do that. Let's give that a try. In fact, I'll bring up our model for that purpose and we shall pan. Let's try this out. Whoa. So it slows it down. It looks, I guess it's filming at 60 and then down to 30, but yeah very cinematic feel to it. So uh, again, just like all the other camera features, it's it's software heavy stuff. And it's amazing what they're capable of uh, via software, obviously. It's a real preference thing. 
you don't have to agree. You could say, I prefer the look of a Samsung photo. You could say, I prefer the look of an iPhone photo. They all make great photos. It's cool to have your preference. What I tend to think uh, about the Pixel camera program is it seems to have a focus on sharpness, maybe maybe tweaking the sharpness a little bit, and contrast instead of going overboard on saturation and smoothing, at least in my experience, and, and that happens to be to my personal preference. Okay, something else worth mentioning here. The speaker setup is a bit weird. It is a more than one speaker. I, I, I don't really want to call it stereo because most of the sound comes out of the bottom. And then the top side, is it looks like one of these in-screen kind of speaker units for the earpiece. That's okay, but for audio when you're, I don't know, watching some YouTube, as you would be, it, uh, is, it's not the uh, optimal experience. So let's go ahead and play a clip from Lou later here. As so if I plug up imagine. the bottom speaker, uh, you can't. It's just not as casual it ain't as much coming to. out of the earpiece section. So don't think it's a stereo speaker yeah, so just uh, experience. The lockdown stuff first started, there was talk of Starbucks even shutting down some stores. But of course, Starbucks huge. Look at how symmetrical this viewing experience is with the bezels in each direction. Now, obviously you have the hole punch for the front facing camera. One day in the future, that's gonna be hidden beneath the display. Not today, but in the meantime, I mean, this is just a nice little package right here. And it's, it's so strange that we are on the cusp of a resurgence of the small phone. I can't say that I saw it coming. I knew there was some chatter some talk people wondered if it would ever happen but now we have some big players in the space taking the small phone seriously players like apple and players like google and that may have an impact on the marketplace as a whole in encouraging other manufacturers to also rethink their strategy in fact actually the oneplus 8t was kind of similar in a sense that it was a bit smaller than the oneplus 8 pro so we'll see if this continues in the meantime my sim card will now enter this device. Uh, I, I wanna play around with the video, I wanna play around with the photo, and I wanna play around with the idea of having a tiny phone in my pocket in a more traditional form factor because I have been using the Z Fold 2 for a, a long period of time. And I have actually a few more things to say about this guy as well. Uh, I think this is kind of underrated. You might think that sounds crazy because millions of people are obviously interested in this. This is a lot more like having an entire computer in your pocket. It's like a pocket tablet as much as it's a phone. And there are the drawbacks, of course, with carrying a brick around comparatively to something like this. But when you pop this thing open, you need to get some work done. You need to do some serious typing. There's not much else like it that you can fit in your pocket. So I don't know, maybe I'll have more coming up on my experience with this. But for now, the SIM card is about to enter the brand new Pixel 5 bigger battery features that I wanted, like the reverse wireless charge, wireless charge. The display looks nice, and it's just, well, it's the latest Pixel, so I'm gonna give it a shot.